Welcome into another episode of Raven Reports. We got some good news, we got some bad news, some injury updates on Adafe Owe, Tyler Linderbaum, and Arthur Marlette, as well as some top takeaways and highlights from practice today. We are two days away from our first preseason game, and we got rookie offensive tackle Roger Rosengarten talking about that opportunity and much more Baltimore Ravens news. At number one, let's talk about some of the takeaways from practice today. A very strong, accurate, sharp day for quarterback Lamar Jackson. He was excellent today in red zone drills, threading the ball into tight windows for some touchdown passes. There's also some nice blitzes from defensive coordinator Zachary Orr, and the Ravens keep drilling that, trying to get the offense better at handling some of those blitzes. Zay Flowers, at no surprise, had the play of the day with a slot fade touchdown catch from Lamar Jackson. We saw that play implemented quite a bit last year with Todd Munkin as the coordinator. We're going to continue to see a heavy dosage of that, and Lamar Jackson was throwing that ball pretty well last year. Specifically, the Ravens were using Nelson Aguilar in that package, but... In this upcoming preseason game, we're going to get to see some of these receivers, specifically on the back half of that depth chart like Devontae Walker, Russell Gage, Tylen Wallace, and some of these guys going out there, and we're going to see who makes plays and makes this roster as a wide receiver. Some other notes, Owen Wright, the undrafted free agent rookie running back from last year, continues to have a strong camp, had another nice day today. Charlie Kohler, third-year tight end, drafted actually before Isaiah Likely, and Tylen Wallace continues to have a strong chemistry with Lamar Jackson making multiple nice catches today again. And during seven on sevens and red zone drills today, Lamar Jackson completed four straight touchdown passes, and his fifth was downed at the one yard line, you know, one yard short from that touchdown. So he was pretty hot today, pretty sharp and accurate, slinging the ball around to his playmakers. Charlie Kohler and Tylen Wallace were the most frequent targeted pass catchers today. At number two, an injury update on Tyler Linderbaum. We got a little bit of some insight kind of indirectly when John Harbaugh answered another question about Ben Cleveland playing at center. He said, since Tyler Linderbaum is going to be out for a little while, you're going to see him at center quite a bit. Ben Cleveland going into his fourth year has showed some flashes specifically at guard started working in at center last year. Here's what John Harbaugh had to say. I mean, I think it's a little bit of both, but Ben has done such a good job at center. Now we have Tyler out for a while. I think we're going to see him at center uh, quite a bit here for the next two weeks. So originally it was reported that the injury was not serious. We're thinking maybe, what, maybe a few days, you know, maybe a week or so. But, you know, John Harbaugh said today, going to be out for a little while. I know that leaves up a lot to be interpreted, a lot for interpretation there. But a little while, to me, in my opinion, seems like at least a few weeks. And could definitely be a contributing factor of why the Ravens were pursuing Connor Williams, who ultimately ended up signing with the Seattle Seahawks. Ben Cleveland has himself a uh, big opportunity in front of him, not only to make the roster as the backup center, but to also but to put some good stuff out on tape this year as he's going into a contract year and hitting free agency next year. Obviously, Tyler Linderbaum was one of the best centers in football last year. He's a huge part of this offense, not only in pass protection and helping to keep Lamar Jackson clean right up the middle. He's also uh, a weapon in the run game, getting out in space, and just demolishing guys in the run game. I will have my eyes on Ben Cleveland to see how he performs at center in this upcoming game in two days versus the Philadelphia Eagles. At number three, another injury update. Not the greatest news because cornerback Arthur Millette, he's having a procedure, a scope done on his knee. Not long-term by any stretch is what John Harbaugh had to say. We do, uh, yeah, he's gonna have a, a scope uh, surgery and uh, a cleanup type of a situation and uh, it'll, it'll keep him out for a little while but not long term by any stretch uh, so we can revisit it when, when we get close to the start of the season and talk about it. So obviously Arthur Millette he was having an excellent camp he played great last year you don't want to see him go down with injury but fortunately for the Ravens they have a very deep secondary and specifically Marlon Humphrey talked earlier in the offseason just about a week a few weeks ago about how the coaching staff have talked to him and Brandon Stevens about bumping into the nickel that opens up you know a starting spot for Nate Wiggins to possibly play on the outside as well as Jalen Armour Davis who's having an excellent camp Marlon Humphrey's best year that he's had his all-pro season 
and multiple of his Pro Bowls was primarily in the nickel, playing the slot corner position. He's great outside, but in my opinion, he's even better inside to where he can use his physicality and he can get dialed up on some of those, you know, slot nickel blitzes. He can, you know, get in there. He had all those punch outs whenever he was, you know, closer to the line of scrimmage, closer to the, the middle of the field with all the action going on in there. And I'd love to see Marlon Humphrey, you know, starting to nickel a lot again this year, having Nate Wiggins, Braden Stevens, Jalen Armour Davis rotating on the outside. And then Kyle Hamilton can just fly around and just be the Swiss Army knife in the defense where he could blitz, he could drop back deep, he could play, you know, dime linebacker, he could play wherever you want him to. So the secondary is deep all around. Eddie Jackson, Marcus Williams, you got corners. Uh, Pepe Williams going to be fighting for a roster spot. Our Darius Washington is can play safety and nickel as well. So lots of versatility there. No need to panic, but obviously a blow to the defense. At number four, some good news on the injury front is Adafe Owe returned to practice. He was dealing with an ankle injury. Adafe Owe is the primary rusher in the pass rush right now. He's monumental to this defense. If Adafe Owe has a big year and he starts, you know, flirting with double-digit sacks and causing consistent issues in the backfield for quarterbacks, the defense is going to be really good. If the rush can match up and marry, you know, with the secondary, with that coverage back there. There's going to be a lot of sacks for this defense yet again. And obviously having Justin Matabike, Travis Jones, and Michael Pierce helps out to eat up blocks on the inside. And especially whenever you just signed, you know, the leading interior defensive lineman in all of the NFL in sacks last year to a monster contract, the pass rush is going to be just fine. But Adafi Owe, he's a huge integral part of that. At number five, the rookie offensive tackle, Roger Rosengarten is going to get some really important reps for his career, man. These How he performs in this game will go a long way. We're going to get to see him in live game action. I want to see how he holds up against some of these big, strong outside linebackers, not just as a you know pass protector, but I want to see how he performs in a run game as well. And ultimately, I'm, I'm just excited to see if he starts at all as a rookie or if it's going to be Patrick McCarry getting the nod there you know, the veteran who they may, who may not have as much upside as Rosengarten, but that they may just trust a little bit more. Really eager to see how this plays out because a lot of these guys, I wouldn't be surprised if all of the offensive line was in on the action in preseason, except for maybe, you know, Ronnie Stanley. Here's what he had to say on this upcoming game. It feels amazing, you know, um, kind of just going through rookie minicamp OTAs and just the spring practices to now you finally get to training camp. I mean, it's super exciting. It's a uh, a feeling that I've dreamt since I was a little kid, and now I'm going to play my first NFL game here coming up. So, um, all good angst. You know, I'm super excited, and I can't wait. So, Roger Rosengarten is fired up, ready to go for this game. I am, too. It's our first taste of some live Ravens game action where we get to see our guys out there on the field. And then we're going to have the chance to break down the film and see how all the rookies and everyone performed, who, who stood out. It's just Football's back, baby, and I'm just fired up for it. And uh, here's what Roger Rosengarten had to say on his biggest improvements that he's made during the offseason. Um, I definitely I definitely would just say probably my hands, you know. I think especially when you get to this level, um, hands are everything. Um, whether that's hand placement on a power move, a speed move, um, hands in the run game, you know, you name it. Um, a to Z, you know, I'm just trying to get better and better, and I feel like I really made a big stride in that department. All right, guys, let me know in the comments section below your top five starting offensive linemen from left to right the offense has playmakers all over the field derrick henry mark andrews of course lamar jackson Rashad bateman zay flowers isaiah likely we got charlie kohler in action making plays the rookie Devontae walker with the speed we got playmakers but how well the offensive line consistently performs and you know gives lamar jackson time to push the ball downfield opens up running lanes for derrick henry that's going to go a huge way in determining the ceiling of this offense man i'm fired up and i just want to see in the comments who you think those starting five are going to be as always if you enjoyed today's content make sure to leave the video a like it does really help out the channel and i appreciate it i love you guys i appreciate y'all and we'll see you in the next video
when he wasn't looking, he ran me over.